we do um, here, Doug, is, is we do a, um, a calling out to country, um, and that's about acknowledging um, country. Um, and in, in, in my language, I, I'll sing out and introduce myself. So, um, so I'm here, I'm talking to country, and I'll tell country who I am. Um, um, and then we acknowledging country then. So this, these are the homes of the, um, uh, the Bulwai people. Um, and they speak the Jabagai language. Um, and near neighbours are the Jabagai and the Nyagali um, and the Gulai people. But yeah, we acknowledge country here today and calling out to it. And for me, it's about, um, um, it's like saying, um, if you, when you walk into those special places that you know, what would you say to that place? And that's calling out the country, acknowledging that country in that way. Um, I think one of the things I think in the approach when we do welcome to countries, or when welcome to countries is done, is that it's, it's made about people, but it should be about country. So that's where we're just calling out the country here now. So I just tell the country that I'm here. Um, yeah, so we've been doing some um, work here over the, um, on, on this property, Kanjini, which is on, um, on Bulwai country um, uh, near Davies Creek National Park. Um, and we, we've had Victor working with us and the landholder over the last few years to apply the right fire um, for this country. Um, and the, the work that's been undertaken um, with rangers and, and the landholder, um, which is a cooperative um, group. So Victor's been doing some work with us at B for the last three or four years around this. Um, so yeah, Vic, what do you think about some of the management aspects yeah. here? Firstly, it's just great to be here on Bulwai country and Jabagai country. And and um, yeah, for me, I'm Takalak. I'm, I'm another eight hours west of here. Um, but I grew up in this area here with Barry. And a lot of landholders are doing that now these days all over the country. They're buying land and they want to look after it. And um, I find that all over Australia. Uh, and a lot of them want to know how to look after it the right way. And so for this case, these property owners have got the local um, rangers to manage this land for them um, with the fire. Um, this used to be old cattle property. And, um, and I think some forestry too. Yeah, and forestry, yeah. logging. Um, and um, as you can see, it's just full of weeds and um, because of this past management. And basically it was just all full of weed. Mm. And what we're seeing now, um, we put one burn through on one side, some areas we haven't burnt, and you can see obviously where we haven't burnt, but other areas where we have burnt, you can see the, all the native grasses are coming through. And now we've got more native grasses than weeds that are coming through the country. Whereas before it was just all full of um, stylo and different weeds and introduced grasses like the greater grass you see in front of us. And that's the typical for a lot of cleared landscapes where they take out the timber and they deforest it or, and they stop managing it with fire. And so the main goal for this property is for them, they want us to get it back to its natural state. And so the first step is to, is to get the trees back healthy again and to, and to bring back trees where there's no trees. And we do all that with the fire. So this is a great case study on a national scale of showing both private and government sectors working with Aboriginal people and working together and getting really good results. But the, the other interesting thing, I think, um, Vic, about this property is, is the, the range of landscapes. So, you know, we've got that ironwood country and ironbark country up top there and, mm. and mixed tree country and bloodwood down in here. So we're able to apply um, all those different understandings and, and cultural knowledge and apply different types of fire at, at all, all year round, basically. And most importantly, um, it's getting right down to that fine line, you know, of that real, like, perfection of land management using fire and without using fire in places where you don't need fire. And that is um, that fine perfection that Aboriginal people have developed over thousands of years of being a part of that landscape. And that's the connection that we're working from and trying to work people towards again. Mm. And that is about managing the land for food, for um, all the natural plants and all the animals that all tie into cultural affiliation and identity to people and landscapes. 
and um, when we look at the country that way and manage it the way that um, the old people saw it as, as their greatest asset of all and not mitigation and not hazard reduction and protecting houses, but actually seeing it as food and seeing our landscape as an economy that sustains a cultural connection and sustains a whole livelihood, a health, everything. And not just for Aboriginal people, but right across the board. And So uh, a couple of things that came up there were around fire management as, as one of the tools in the toolkit. Um, and there are other things you can do as well and, and how you balance those things. And how from a, a land care perspective, you, you can engage um, with traditional knowledge to do that. And then the other element is um, uh, the reference to cultural burning and what constitutes a cultural burn because there's a lot of conversation and people say they're doing cultural burning but they don't have the knowledge of the old people. You know the old people never use that term but when I grew up with them and you know around other people and um, never heard cultural burning it was always just Aboriginal fire management you know and burning country. Aboriginal fire management is really important for Aboriginal people because of their culture and reviving their culture, it's, it's important about employment and giving our young people direction. All of this is about the aspirations of the elders. And the elders all over Australia, they want to see their young people managing the land and looking after the land and keeping their culture going. But fundamentally, I think the, 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 the starting point um, is understanding and reading country, being able to um, apply a whole range of different um, land management tools um, and then, and fire is the key there. But you know, being able to mechanically clear and um, and then set up monitoring plots for cultural indicators is the main work that we're trying to achieve through that. Yeah. But I think that's a key point, um, Vic, in regards to when uh, ma ma modern day management practices are about um, looking at country in silos and isolation, um, whereas country needs to be viewed as a whole. And that's what um, indigenous knowledge is. It's holistic. And so when we're talking about country, we're talking about the trees, the animals, the plants, everything, and the benefits, and then even the health to people, and the benefits to education, and to employment. So this is about um, that big corner we've got to turn as a nation. That this NAIDOC theme is touched on today, this year is the healing country. What we've got to deal with is massive and um, not only in healing the land practically and looking after country, that seems to be the easy part, but the most hardest part is people. And the land care community is about healing country and like you've talked about agricultural productive landscapes right through to you know, the conservation estate, that's the, that's the land care movement. So you're, you're really talking to, to everyone that's a participant in land care, wants to understand how this engagement can take place. And you're starting to see it come together. Like we, we certainly do a fair bit of work with um, our local land care groups, um, um, but that work um, um, started off around um, site prep and site rehab um, and, and being able to have those areas in, in repairing zones um, um, restored um, to what they should be. We've seen that extend into threatened species work. So out of the burning country, um, we found words to songs that weren't, weren't applied until um, old people were out in the country and they were listening and talking and started re, um, realising that, that there was that song that, that we had been missing for a long time. Um, so being able to apply those things. So culture regenerates, you know, with land as well. So it's healing country and healing, healing knowledge as well. Healing knowledge yeah. and healing people, yeah. People are a part of the country and that if you're going to heal landscapes, you've got to heal people with the landscape. Yeah. Because this country has evolved with people over thousands of years of burning the right way. And so people have been part of the evolution of the, all the ecosystems. Barry's gonna start the first one here. And so you're gonna sing out there, let the country know, and off we go. Cool. Well, you know, so I'm just saying, I'm gonna go and open up country with fire. That's all part of singing out the country, and that's all part of connecting to country. You can hear the bird sing out then. They're all acknowledging it, see? They're all letting each other know. And all the insects that start climbing the trees now, and things start moving out the way. It's all about food. The right fire for the soils, all the way to protecting all the lives of the insects. 
so that the birds can eat the insects. That we don't scorch the canopies, so we've got shade. And that the trees are protected and not all burnt so that they can continue to flower for the, through the season and continue to seed and continue to give shade. This is a hot country, we need shade. So that's why the fire, we only burn the grass. And here, what used to be weed from last burn we did, now has turned to native grasses and only a little bit of weed instead of all weed. So now we're burning the right vegetation and that's what we aim to do. We burn to bring back the right vegetation. So the only thing we're burning is the grass. Then you can also see the organic matter is still there. Yeah. And that tells you we haven't cooked the organic matter in the soils so that they've got the goodness in there and the seed banks. And you can still see grass seeds in there too. But we've gotten rid of the fuel load. And this is also protects it from wildfire because we'll have green grasses here and not dead grasses. So that's why we need to demonstrate through traditional knowledge so that people know that the fires are gentle and very calm and burn in the right places. So here we are in the river system here, Enmore Creek, and beautiful, beautiful water. And these are the one of the areas that we don't want to burn. And there are many areas that we don't want to put fire, rainforest, river systems, gullies, um, certain ecosystems that um, belong to certain values. And um, this is one of them. And it's really important that people understand that when we do fire management, we don't burn all the country. Next to fire is the water. We should be looking after our rivers, should be taking care of our water systems because it's so important to the health of our landscapes and for our ongoing, um, you know, sustainability in this country. Um, so water, more and more we're seeing being used as a commodity, um, but to us it starts with that cultural value and that cultural value defines our identity. So the importance of water to that cultural identity um, and that identity then goes... Um, and talks to the species and biodiversity and the different um, values within the river um, and water um, is important for our life and our identity um, and, and culture moving forward. So when I see the work that we do um, um, as Indigenous rangers on the ground um, and then I look at the influence that it has on um, particular um, the younger men um, and women that I work with and that are involved in, in the work that we do. And the sense of pride that I see within um, those young people um, wearing that uniform and walking around is, is great for their self-worth, um, but also great for their, their, um, uh, the way they're perceived in the community. And to be able to uh, demonstrate in, in some small way that, that there's a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of uh, views, um, and with that comes a wealth of opportunities in the messages as well to be able to share and to be able to come together around those aspects of um, management because at the end of the day the, the goals um, and what we're trying to achieve is, is the same, it's one of the same, there's really no difference. It's been a tremendous honour and privilege to be out here with, with Barry and Victor on Barry's country and to have him welcome us through his ancestors, um, invite us to be part of demonstrating fire in the landscape. And what a wonderful opportunity for Landcare is to be able to see that through this piece of vision. A lot of land carers are already working with First Nations people. They've, they've already got fantastic partnerships. What, what we want to see within the Landcare community, I know, because I feel it and, and people talk to me about it, is to take the next step and, and to reach out. And what we've heard from Victor and Barry today is that invitation to reach out and and I know when when we reach out and when Indigenous communities reach out to us that we're going to learn so much together and it's always the case you achieve so much more together than separately and at the end of the day we're, we're all one Australian community and land carers are a big part of it and have a huge role to play. 
you know, for me, I'm a Takalaka man, and um, I never grew up in my country. And traditional knowledge was the most important thing, you know, for me. I didn't realise it was a practice that was so far gone right across the, the country in many places. And um, so there's a lot of work to do to bring all that knowledge back. And the biggest message for Healing Country um, from me for this, uh, for this year is um, we can't heal country if we can't work together. And so there's a lot of reasons why that's so important for our health. Um, and why they, this is so important for the health of our young people, for their futures, economically, health-wise, culturally, all the above. And, and it's, that's just so important. Aboriginal people have been a part of this land for thousands of years and the land has evolved with people. And it's so important that, um, that people understand that we go with the health of the land and we're a part of that healing process. And you are too.